Hello everyone, I am Divya, your math facilitator. So today I am here with a new chapter, Chemical Equations. We are going to cover this chapter very quickly. It's a very short and sweet chapter. But let me tell you problems, we are going to do it as a separate video. Okay, so the theory part and all the important points, everything we are going to cover in this session and it's going to be very short. Okay, so quickly let us start and understand what is a chemical equation. Okay, the chapter name, chemical equation. What is a chemical equation? Equation in max, what does equation in max mean? You have left hand side, okay, then you have right hand side. In between you have a is equal to sign. Here in chemical equations, you have something on the left hand side, okay. At this left hand side is giving rise to something on the right hand side, okay. In max, what do you have? Equal to sign. Here you have LHS and here you have RHS. Now in our chemistry also something like that we have. So what is that? You have a left hand side and you have a right hand side. In between you have an arrow mark like this. Now what does it mean? On your left hand side you have something called reactants. What are they? Reactants. These reactants, okay, some chemical reaction happens and then you get something called products. Okay, the final output is called products. Understood? You have a reactant and these reactants will give you a final output which are nothing but products. Clear till here? So, this is called a chemical equation. So, let me give you some examples of it also. Firstly, let's read out the statement what is given. I hope you understood. So, you'll have a reactant. The reactants will chemically, uh, you know, some chemical reaction happens. They may chemically combine, they may chemically decompose, something can happen and you'll get a product. And reactant side, you can have one or more chemicals, okay? In very simple language, I'm trying to explain. On the product side also, after the chemical reaction, you can have one or more uh, products. So, please look into the Definition, a chemical reaction is expressed in terms of formula, okay. So, instead of writing the names, you write formula for it and uh, formula you write it with symbols, okay. A chemical equation of a reaction is written in the form to show the change of reactants into products. So, what is usually done in chemical reaction? How reactants are changed into products that is shown in the chemical equation, okay. And in between what you have, you have an arrow. Okay, reactants, two products, you have a arrow mark as I have shown here in a very simple language. Okay, so let's take an example. The reaction of calcium oxide and water. This is the very first activity you have in your chapter. Okay, calcium oxide with water. Okay, what is the reaction which happens? Now, this is a chemical uh, reaction which is happening. It's a chemical combination and how and what is happening here? Let me explain you. See, calcium oxide is combining with water. What is happening? You are taking calcium oxide and you are taking water. So, you are combining calcium oxide with water. Then what is the result you are getting? The result is you get calcium hydroxide. Okay. So, this is the entire uh, chemical reaction which is happening. Okay. This chemical reaction, if I want to express, I express it in terms of chemical equation which we have learned now okay so what are what are the things what are the things which you are taking before the reaction okay for the reaction to happen you are taking calcium oxide and water okay what are you doing you're combining them so combining means plus okay so you're mixing water and calcium oxide then what are you getting what is the output what is the result that you write uh, arrow mark and then you write here. This is called product. Okay, the result is called product and this is called this side. Calcium oxide and water are called reactants. Okay, calcium oxide and water are called reactants. Now see here. So reactants are giving you product. Clear? So this is a equation. But this equation also you can reduce it into short form. How? By writing the formulae with symbols okay so calcium oxide can be written as cao in ninth class you have learned how to write the formulae so calcium oxide calcium ca oxygen o okay so calcium oxide its valency is one and one so ca o oh, sorry two and two so cao one calcium reacts with one oxygen okay and water h2o 
gives rise to calcium hydroxide. Okay, calcium hydroxide CaOH taken twice. You read it as CaOH taken twice. Okay, so this is a chemical equation. So can you see here what have we written? We have written reactants. And you get a product in between there is an aromat and reactants and products are in the form of symbols. Okay, you have written the chemical formula. Clear? So this is a chemical equation. This is the very first activity of your chapter. Now see here, the substances which undergo a chemical change in the chemical reaction are called reactants. Who is undergoing the change? Calcium, oxygen and water are undergoing the change. And what is the result you are getting? What are the new substances you are getting? Calcium hydroxide. So the new substance you get is called products. Okay. This notes will be available in mathfacilitator.com website. Don't forget to download it for free. Okay. So see here. In the above equation, calcium oxide and water are reactants and calcium hydroxide is the product okay and uh, change of reactants to products is shown by arrow mark in between reactants and products what is the arrow mark is there right the arrow had the point okay wh wherever the arrow mark is showing suppose if the arrow mark is showing like this which means here reactants are there reactants are giving rise to giving rise to products okay so the arrowhead direction will show you the products direction okay reactants are giving products the reactants are written on the left side of the arrow and products are written on the right side of it. Very simple things, isn't it? So see, some of the equations are given. This is nothing but your activity 3 of your textbook. Then activity 2, you have uh, sodium sulfate with barium chloride. Sodium sulfate, 10 ml sodium sulfate. Okay, and uh, barium chloride, you take solutions of it, both of it, and then you mix both of them. Okay, so you take sodium sulfate solution and you take barium chloride solution. Mix this sodium sulfate solution with barium chloride. So what is formed? NaCl, salt is formed and barium sulfate is formed. Okay, so this is your activity 2. Now activity 3 is? Zinc, zinc granules reacting with HCl, hydrochloric acid, will give you ZnCl2. So here what is happening, see, Zn is going and taking the place of hydrogen. Zinc is taking place of hydrogen, okay. So ZnCl2, clear and hydrogen comes out. Here also see what is happening, please see here what is happening. So sodium and barium are exchanging its places. Yes, so sodium is coming and see, sodium is combined with chlorine, so you get NaCl and barium is going and mixing with sulfate, so you get BaSO4. Clear? So, just observe the reactions, it will be easy for you to rewrite them. Then see here, hydrogen plus oxygen gives you water. And uh, iron oxide, Fe2O3 plus Al, so here also what is happening, see here. Aluminium is displacing iron. So here in the place of Fe2O3, you get Al2O3 and iron is coming out. Okay. So these are some of the examples of chemical equations where you have left hand side are the reactants, right hand side are the products. Okay. So now the next very important topic, balancing of chemical equation. So according to law of conservation of mass, According to the law of conservation of mass, in 9th class you have learnt uh, an activity. You take two chemicals, in one in the conical flask, one in the test tube and you tie it okay, to the rubber corker and you fix it. Then you shake the two chemicals and some reaction happens. Okay, I am explaining in very general way. Reaction happens. Okay, so this much is clear. So you are taking two chemicals, one in the conical flask, one in the test tube and you are inserting the test tube. So, this is how it is. Here, something is there. Inside, you keep a test tube here. Okay, and you close the entire thing with a rubber stopper. And the test tube also chemical is there. Now, you shake it. Okay, so when you shake it, what happens? The chemical in the test tube also is mixing with this. And some reaction definitely will happen. So, what are we doing? You will check the mass. You check the mass of this 
before the reaction that is this mass and mass of this after the reaction you will see that both the masses are same okay so with this experiment we conclude that the mass is neither created nor destroyed this is all your ninth class activity i'm explaining so mass is neither created nor destroyed so that is called law of conservation of mass now you understood why was i explaining that to connect to to what we are going to learn balancing chemical equation okay so this is called law of conservation of mass so we know that mass is neither created neither created nor destroyed okay so what is the meaning of mass mass is nothing but see if i give you any chemical okay you measure the mass of it okay what is the chemical consist of again chemical consist of molecules right or compounds now what does these molecules and all ultimately consist of atoms yes we have learned atom is a basic unit right so this consists of atoms now please understand if i am trying to measure the mass of any chemical suppose if i am trying to measure the mass of hydrochloric acid for example so which means i am actually trying to measure the mass of the atoms the number of atoms right so and you know atom has very 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 negligible mass so if i can measure the number of atoms which i which means i can get the mass of it are you able to understand okay in again i'll try to make it even more simple for you suppose i have a chocolate box i'm measuring the mass of this chocolate box okay and inside there are chocolates okay each chocolate say the mass of each chocolate is one unit mass of, mass of each chocolate is one unit and there are 100 chocolates in it so can you tell me the mass of the entire chocolate box directly 1 into 100 100 units is the mass of this chocolate box isn't it so this chocolate box is nothing but the chemical which you are measuring and these individual chocolates are nothing but the atoms so if i know how many atoms are there i can simply measure the mass of the uh, chemical given to me okay so mass is neither created nor destroyed so chemicals are combining okay something reaction is happening and then you are getting the product so which means the entire mass what does it mean now so the entire number of atoms present before the reaction and the number of atoms present after the reaction should be same okay because mass is same let me write it here since we know that mass is same now we understood that mass is neither created nor destroyed so mass before reaction okay is equal to mass after reaction but what does mass consists of mass of any particular thing consists of the mass of the smallest smallest units the sum of the masses of all the smallest units here the smallest unit is nothing but atom so i can simply say number of atoms before should be equal to number of atoms after the reaction okay that is the whole concept so number of atoms before and after should be equal okay so that is what we are going to do and if the number of atoms before and after the mass are equal such a reaction is called balanced chemical reaction yes such an equation is called balanced chemical equation clear so let's try to understand this in other words in a chemical reaction the total mass of the products formed must be equal to the total mass of the reactants consumed okay so mass of the product should be equal to mass of the reactants and how are you getting the mass you get the mass atom small small atoms together is forming the mass of the reactants isn't it so instead what are we doing you are finding the number of atoms okay so since atom is the smallest particle okay so we say that mass of the number of atoms before and reaction and the number of atoms after the reaction should be same okay so see here an atom is the smallest particle of an element that takes part in the chemical reaction so it is the atom which accounts for the mass of any substance so that's why we say number of atoms of each element before and after should be same okay yes 
Till here is it clear? So why are we balancing? Because mass is neither created nor destroyed. So mass means again it is nothing but atom is the smallest unit which is constituting for the mass of the entire chemical, whichever chemical you take. So therefore we are just saying that number of atoms before the reaction should be equal to the number of atoms after the reaction. Okay. So a chemical equation in which number of atoms of different elements of the reactant side is equal to the number of atoms in the product side is called balanced chemical equation. Okay. So in simple words, what is it? Number of atoms before and number of atoms after should be equal. Such a chemical equation is called balanced chemical equation. Okay. Now see here. Balancing chemical equations involves in finding out how many formula units of each substance takes part in the reaction. Now what is the meaning of formula unit? Formula unit is nothing but how many atoms are there or how many ions are there or how many molecules are there. Okay. Formula unit is nothing but a unit of atom or ion or molecule corresponding to a given formula. Okay, that is called formula unit. So, you simply count how many atoms are there. As of here, we count how many atoms are there and we see that the number of atoms before the reaction and the number of atoms after the reaction are the same. Yes. So, formula unit of NaCl, for example, means NaCl See, it can split into ions, right? What are the ions? Na plus and Cl minus ions. So, these ions are called formula unit of sodium chloride is Na plus and Cl minus. 1 Na plus and 1 Cl minus. Now, MgBr2 also can split it into ion. Mg, magnesium, valency is plus 2 and bromine is minus. So, 1 magnesium is reacting with 2 bromines. Understood? Yes. Now, let us see how can we balance a chemical equation. This is all theory. I will tell you with example also. So, let us consider one equation. So, here we have one equation. See, H2 plus O2 gives H2O. Okay. So, this reaction which you have is called, which is not balanced. It is called a primary equation or it is called a skeletal equation. The equation is, which is not balanced is called primary or skeletal equation. Okay. So, here just look at the equation. What I have? Hydrogen. So, let me write hydrogen under the element. Hydrogen, you have it both on the reactant side and also you have hydrogen on the product side. Yes or no? Okay. Whatever chemicals you have, both the sides you will have more. Okay, then what I have oxygen, I have oxygen. So on reactant side and product side. So whatever chemicals you have, you will write under the name of element. Understood? Now say how many hydrogen atoms we have here? Two. So on the reactant side, two hydrogen atoms are there. Now how many hydrogen atoms are there on the product side? Two. How many oxygen atoms are there in the reactant side? How many oxygens are there in the product side? See, this will tell you the number. How many are there? Only one. So, hydrogens is balanced. Before the reaction, after the reactants, 2 and 2 is balanced. Oxygen, before the reactants, uh, reaction it is 2 and after the reaction it is only 1. So, here products needs to be balanced. How will you balance? How can I make this 1 as 2? If I simply multiply this 1, with the 2, I will get 2. Yes or no? So, where am I multiplying by 2? Which side? Oxygen, product side, I should multiply by 2. Very important thing, remember, oxygen product side means never write 2 here with the oxygen. If you are writing 2 like this, you are changing the formula. Okay, so never write like that. Always, whenever you are balancing, whatever you want to change, you will change before the formula here like this. Okay, never you will write in between the formula as suffix. Okay, whatever you are writing now, O, here this is called suffix. This part is called suffix. Here you will never change anything. Whatever you will write, you will write before the chemical. Understood? Now, what does it mean? In max, we have coefficient. Yes or no? 2x, 3y. So, this 3, 2, which are before the variable are called coefficient. We should also write whatever you want to make a change, you will make before the formula. Never you will write something here. 
okay as suffix you will never write okay it will change the form right will change the constitution how, how it is mixing okay how it is reacting it will change the valency entire everything will change it will change its properties so never you will write like that you will write only here before the formula so when i wrote before the formula oxygen i wanted to make two so oxygen side product side i should make two so i made two but see hydrogen is also involved so hydrogen is changing how it is changing see already two hydrogens are there now you are you are writing two before the formula which means to two is a four hydrogens now product side four hydrogens i have so cut and write four now this two how i can make four reactant side two Simply by multiplying by two, so two two is a four. Now two I have to write this two where hydrogen side reactants. Okay, hydrogens reactant side I should write two. Reactant side hydrogen is here, so here I should write two. Again I am telling you, you will write two only before the formula. Okay, so now you check all all the hydrogen and oxygen atoms are balanced. This side you have reactant side you have four hydrogens. Product side also four hydrogens. Reactant side you have two oxygens. Product side also two oxygens. Clear? So this is how you balance the chemical equation. You see, whole number should be written as coefficient only. You will never write it as a suffix. Clear now? Yes. In chemical reaction, only coefficient should be changed, but not the formula. You cannot change the formula. Only coefficients you have to change. So this is the final balanced equation we got. Okay, so you can go through this theory once I post it in the mathfacilitator.com website. It is all the same. Whatever I explained is there here. Okay, you can go through it. Now let us see one more example. Zn plus HCl gives rise to ZnCl2 plus H2. Yes, this is a skeletal reaction. Okay, primary reaction or skeletal reaction. I should balance it. How will I balance? I will write element name. I will write reactants name. I are uh, reactants and products. Element name zinc. How many zincs are there before the reaction? See, only one zinc is there. After product side also one zinc is there. Hydrogen. How many hydrogens are there next? Reactant side one. Product side two are there. Okay, then chlorine. How many chlorines are there before the reaction one? And here product side two chlorines are there. Okay. So how can we do this now? See here. What I'll do is I'll write this as into two. Okay. Chlorine I'm writing into two. So chlorine reactant side. So here into two I'm writing. So you cannot write here two. Okay. Down you cannot write two. Where will you write two then as a coefficient? Okay. So here we will never write. So two I wrote it as a coefficient. Clear now? So when I'm writing as a coefficient along with chlorine, who is there? Hydrogen is also there, isn't it? So hydrogen number is changing. Reactant side, hydrogen number is becoming 2. Yes, already 2 and 2 balance, 2 and 2 balance, 1 and 1 balance. So this reaction which you're getting is called balanced chemical equation. Understood? It's a balanced chemical equation. Before balancing, it is called primary or skeletal equation. After balancing, it is called balanced chemical equation equation okay so few more examples let's take in one separate video and try to balance them okay as of now let's move on to the next topic so what information does these chemical equations give you first we have learned what is a chemical equation then we have learned how to balance a chemical equation now you now we are going to learn what information does it give you okay so the these chemical equations will give you information regarding the physical state what is physical state we have learned there are three states what are they solid liquid gas and aqueous state aqueous state means aq aqueous state if you mix anything in water aqua means what water if you mix any chemical in water so that is said to be in aqueous state okay so see here it will tell you about the physical state and i told you physical states are solid liquid gas or aqueous okay so fe2o3 plus 2al gives rise to 2fe plus al2o3 this is a chemical equation but along with that if you have something like in the bracket yes 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 which means all these are in solid states okay see here na2so4 in the bracket you have aq aq means aqueous aqueous means substance is present as a solution in water you are mixing that substance in 
वाटर सो सच ए सब्सटेंस इज कॉल्ड सच ए सोल्यूशन इज कॉल्ड एक्वियस सोल्यूशन और एक्वियस स्टेट सो इफ आई राइट एक यू इट मीन्स दिस इज मिक्सड विद वाटर सो सोडियम सल्फेट जस्ट नो वी हैव टेकन द एग्जाम्पल नो एक्टिविटी नंबर टू Plus barium chloride. Barium chloride also you mixed with water, so aqueous AQ. Whenever I see AQ, it means immediately my mind will tell that okay, this is mixed with water. If I see S, my mind will tell tell me that okay, it is in solid state. Okay, whenever I see AQ again, it will tell me that okay, so this is mixed with water. Understood? If I have L here, see here. H two S O four is L, which means my mind will tell me that okay, so sulfuric acid H two S O four means sulfuric acid, so it will say okay, sulfuric acid is in liquid form. Okay, H two hydrogen. If I if there is G here, it means hydrogen gas. G means gas. Okay, so S means solid, L means liquid, G means gas, A Q means aqueous. So with these letters, you can identify what is the state, the physical state of the substance which are involved in the chemical reaction. Okay, next heat changes. So some chemical reactions will absorb heat. Some chemical reactions will release the heat. Okay, so if chemical If the chemical reaction is happening by releasing the heat, if heat is released, such reactions are called exothermic. Okay, heat is liberated or released. Such reactions are called exothermic. Suppose if heat is absorbed, okay, heat is taken, then it is called endothermic. Okay, so when a reaction happens, if heat is released, when when does it react release? After the reaction happens, heat is released. So after the reaction means products side. Okay, when heat is released, heat is released as as a product. Okay, so that you write in the product side as plus Q. Okay, Q is nothing but the heat energy. Okay, Q denotes heat energy. Okay, and if I write minus Q on product side, which means heat is taken. Absorbed, so you write minus Q on the product side, or the same minus Q. If I take this side of the reaction, I can simply write plus Q. Okay, if reactant side, if I write plus Q, which means heat is absorbed, then the reaction happened, and you are getting some products. If reactant side, if product side, if I am writing plus Q, which means after the chemical reaction, heat is re released. Okay, and you are writing it as plus Q. Okay, heat is given out. Given out means. Plus Q, heat is taken. Heat is taken, then the reaction is happening. Okay, so you will write plus Q on the reactant side, or you can write minus Q on the product side. Okay, so if there is plus Q like this on the product side, you say it is exothermic reaction by just looking at plus Q on the product side. You can say it is exothermic, which means heat is released. If you look at minus Q on the product side, you will say it is endothermic, which means heat is absorbed. Okay, so by looking at this, you can say that whether heat is released or absorbed, whether it is exothermic or endothermic. Okay, yes. Next one, gas evolved. I can also tell about the gas evolved. How can I say? Suppose if I have an upward arrow, gas will go up, isn't it? Gas will just escape. It will go up, right? So that gas you will represent with a upward arrow mark like this in the chemical equation if you represent something with a upward arrow mark which means gas is evolved understood ma yes so see here in this reaction upward arrow means hydrogen gas is evolved okay co2 gas is evolved clear yes next you can also get the information about temperature pressure catalyst all this information where where do you write you write it on above the arrow mark suppose here silver agcl i if you keep it under sunlight then you will get ag and cl okay so the sunlight okay what what by just looking at the equation i am able to tell you what reaction might have happened isn't it so these are the different informations which your chemical equations will give you what are they first thing the physical state solid s liquid l gas g and aqueous aq then we'll tell you about the heat changes whether heat is released or absorbed if it is plus q then you say exothermic heat is released if it is minus q you will say endothermic heat is absorbed then it can tell about the gas evolved and not only this better if they give you like the symbol downward arrow which means it is a precipitate 
okay it means it is a precipitate understood so this information also you can get so by looking at the equation whatever information you are able to get okay here sometimes they will write delta uh, delta means heating okay if they give you the symbol it means heat say they will write 120 degree centigrade that means the after heating 120 degree centigrade these are the products you are getting okay so sometimes they write here the pressure also okay so on the aromatic sometimes they write the catalyst also what are you adding to speed up the reaction so all this is mentioned in the reaction okay and by just looking at the chemical equation you will be able to tell us what exactly is the reaction so this chemical equation is giving you so much of information regarding the reactions okay so this is one more question which they may ask you interpreting a balanced chemical equation okay they, they will ask you what information can you get from this okay so just go through it once and yes next interpreting a balanced chemical reaction now when you look at a balanced chemical equation now the above points were by just looking at the chemical equation what can you tell it might be balanced it might not be balanced but here when you balance the chemical equation and see you will know about the reactants and products even in the unbalanced skeletal equation also you will know about reactants and products but here in balance you will know the ratio of molecules of reactants and products because you are balancing and see isn't it so you will know what is the ratio of molecules before and after also you will know about atomic masses okay At atomic masses i will teach you when we are doing the problems again so don't worry as of now understand that we can know about the atomic mass we have learned already in ninth class nothing so uh, you know different that i will explain again carbon atomic number six okay mass number atomic mass is 12 so you write it as 12 grams or 12 am you do you remember so what are these atomic mass units okay so you can also understand about the atomic masses of the reactants and products if you know how many carbons are there suppose two carbons are there means atomic mass will be 12 into 24 so that way you can understand the atomic masses also okay so nothing new but i thought it would be good if i explain with uh, the problem but it's okay so you understood the idea right then molar mass also okay how many moles of a substance is reacting now zn plus hcl gives rise to zn cl2 so when i balanced i got two hcl isn't it which means one mole of zinc is reacting with two moles moles is nothing but the coefficient ma whatever coefficient you have here zinc has no coefficient which means one hcl has two which means two moles zn has no coefficient which means one mole okay so the coefficient will tell you the mole number of moles okay so one mole of zinc is reacting with two moles of hcl to give rise to one mole of zn cl2 from this you will get the molar mass also understood yes next relative masses okay you can also find the relative masses and the mole number of the reactants just now i said mole number now molar masses now c plus o2 gives rise to co2 if i say so 12 grams of carbon yes one mole of carbon means 12 grams okay so from this i'm telling you the molar mass isn't it one mole of oxygen what is this one mole of oxygen nothing is there means one one mole of oxygen means how many grams 32 yes so these are nothing but the molar masses okay so i can tell you about the molar mass how much oxygen is reacting how much carbon dioxide is reacting uh, carbon is reacting to form carbon dioxide okay so molar masses you will know you will know relative masses okay mole number you will know understood so just look at this reaction yes the same reaction is given here so carbon s means solid oxygen gas is giving rise to car is giving rise to carbon dioxide gas okay so from this what can we understand in this equation reactants are carbon oxygen and the product is carbon dioxide this much you understood and ratio of moles is one mole of carbon is reacting with one mole of oxygen to get one mole of carbon dioxide i told you how will you take you will take the coefficient so one nothing is there before carbon means one nothing is there before oxygen which means one nothing is there before carbon dioxide which means it is also one so one mole one mole one mole so ratio of the moles is one is to one is to one atomic mass carbon atomic mass 12 so 12 units and oxygen 
one oxygen is 16 ma so two oxygen o2 molecule means 2 into 16 32 units and carbon dioxide carbon is 12 plus oxygen is 16 16 16 32 you will get actually so total 44 next molar mass instead of units instead of u units you will write grams for molar mass okay so you are getting the information of the molar mass you got information of the, about the atomic mass okay and also what do you understand here 12 grams of carbon is burning with 32 gram of oxygen to give you 44 gram of carbon dioxide okay this is how you can understand how much the molar mass okay and also you can understand about the volume see one mole of any substance will occupy 22.4 liters okay so here oxygen is one mole isn't it one mole of oxygen so one mole of oxygen means it will occupy 22.4 liters so that's what you can say about the volume also carbon dioxide also how many moles of carbon dioxide are you, are you getting in the product side one mole only no so you can say one mole of carbon dioxide also will give me 22.4 liters okay so you are able to tell about the volume also understood and you can also tell how many molecules are there how many atoms are there how can you say simply avogadro number do you remember 6.023 into 10 power 23 so one mole of carbon has how many atoms in it 6.023 10 power 23 now one mole of oxygen has how many molecules in it you can tell and carbon dioxide also right so how you can tell using avogadro number okay because one mole means same number of atoms or molecules or ions whatever are present will uh, you know you can have which is nothing but it is equal to avogadro number okay simply like one dozen of apples means 12 apples one dozen of banana means 12 banana which means one dozen of anything means 12 similarly one mole of anything okay means avogadro number you will find one mole of atom means avogadro number of atoms one mole of molecules means avogadro number of molecule okay same like dozen okay one mole of ions means avogadro number of ions what is avogadro number 6.023 into 10 power 23 so those many atoms or those many ions or those many molecules are there that is the meaning of it okay so with this this is the only three important topics my you will learn in this chapter one is what is chemical equation then balancing chemical equation then why should we balance also we have learned then balancing we have learned then what is the extra information the chemical equation will give you apart from this uh, we have uh, problems problems i will solve in separate videos so that you can have very good understanding about it again okay so each and every problem in detail we shall discuss now next you will have real numbers class i thought of taking it live but i will keep it keep it as a recording only uh, maybe tomorrow because uh, last live class the number was not good number of students so you tell me whether you can attend live or not so accordingly i'll schedule live otherwise i will keep give you recording classes only so that you can see whenever you are free okay and do let me know in the comments what else do you need from the channel because if you don't comment if you don't like if you don't share it with to your friends then even i don't feel like my work is reaching you if my if i feel my work is not reaching you then it is pointless that i do so much of background work then come sit here and explain everything and still i find if the students are if my work is not reaching the students then no point of me working so hard right so please do share it with everyone do like the video do comment okay so bye bye people take care good night